Squad is your favorite North Carolina realtor, South Carolina, Virginia, and Georgia. We are currently active in North Carolina. Today, this is gonna be a quick video. You know, I gotta come to you guys and give you guys some value. So today I'm gonna be telling you guys the forms that you need, the first forms that you need when it's time to sell your home. So the first document that you're gonna need is the listing agreement. The second form that you're gonna need is working with real estate agents. The third form that you're gonna need is the property disclosure statement. The fourth document that you're gonna need is the mineral oil and gas disclosure. You're gonna need a coming soon form, a wire fraud warning, the survey if you have them or the measurements of the home. Then you're gonna need the covenants, conditions, and restrictions, otherwise known as CCNR, and um, the HOA disclosure. So now let me go ahead and break those down in case you guys, you might not know like the actual, you know, term for them. So I'm gonna go ahead and break down which, what each one of those are. So the first one that I mentioned was the listing agreement. If you guys see me looking down, it's because I'm looking at my laptop. I don't want to get any of the descriptions wrong for you or anything. So, you know, I might look at my notes every once in a while. So first, like I said, the listing agreement. This is the agreement between you and the firm. Not you, and, it's technically not between you and the agent. Yes, an agent might send it to you, but it's an agreement between you and the firm. So for example, I am currently with Costello Real Estate and Investment for my North Carolina and soon to be my South Carolina license. The office that I specifically work out of is uh, the Charlotte office. There's also another one in Fort Mill, South Carolina, and then there's one in Raleigh, but I'm out of the Charlotte office. So if I were to come to you, and of course you would pick me to be your agent here in North Carolina, in Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, we would get a listing agreement. You'd be like, hey Leah, I want you to go ahead and help me sell my home. I would send you the listing agreement and then we would go ahead and list your property on the MLS so that we can get it sold for you. And then the another form that I would need to send to you is the working with real estate agents disclosure form. So it's basically just a form that we're required to send to you so that you know what your options are when working with an agent. You shouldn't just be, you know, just signing stuff when you're working with uh, real estate professionals or anybody in general, you shouldn't just be signing things because you don't know what you're signing. But the working with real estate agents disclosure is basically just a disclosure letting you know what your options are for me as an, uh, an agent. But it is important to know your options when you're working with real estate agents. The third one that I mentioned was the property disclosure statement. This form is required by law. It's basically a complete report of the property and its conditions. So that is typically a form that the property owner will have to provide in order to like let, let people know like how is the home doing? Like is there anything that we need to know before we list this property on the MLS or list it to you know the public to be able to buy? Like if there is like an oil tank in the backyard, we need to know about that. You know what I mean? If you know if there's mold, we need to know. You know, there's things that, you know, yes, an inspection could find or, you know, maybe an appraisal, you know, a survey could find. But if you know about those things, then it's best for us to go ahead and let the buyers know. That way we don't have any trouble later on. And then the mineral oil and gas disclosure, that's commonly known as MOG, so M-O-G. That disclosure is exactly how it sounds. It's basically a disclosure for mineral oil and gas. And that form is required in North Carolina if you have a home that has less than four units. So if you have a multifamily property that has uh, potentially two, three, or up to four, if you have a single family home, or just one with one unit. I know I'm kind of explaining it just a little bit confusing, but pretty much anything under four units would have to have an, uh, a mineral, oil, and gas disclosure. So keep that in mind if you have a multi-unit property or anything under that. So if you have one house, which is typically what people have, like where they only have one uh, unit attached to the home, then more than likely, and you live in North Carolina, you're gonna have to have a, a mineral oil and gas disclosure. Oh yeah, and individual condos and townhomes definitely do count, so keep that in mind. And in the coming soon form, that's just like a form for us to, you know, say that it's coming soon. And then the wire fraud warning. So that is basically just like a statement um, that 
the NARS or so the National Association of Realtors, they heard them, we need to send you guys that form basically to protect you guys against wiring fraud. Like don't just be sending money to people that you don't know. Always like either consult your realtor, consult your, you know, your loan officer if you're working with a, a loan officer. Um, like discuss it with the people that you're you're actually working with. Don't send any money to anybody before discussing it with them because you don't know who you're really sending stuff to. So please don't do that. When you get the wire fraud warning, please read over it so that you you know good things to look out for. But don't send money to anybody that you don't know. Then the survey. So surveys are really important because believe it or not, you could have a property that you've been living on for years and not even know that there's like an encroachment or you know that the other uh, person that lives beside you that their property is you know on yours just a little bit maybe they might have a garage and like a little itsy bitsy tiny bit is on your property now you have this whole issue because you can't like just up and move the garage so surveys if you have a survey perfect you know what i mean i would always recommend a survey is done but you know it is very very important to have if you if you don't have it you know it's fine but it's important to have and then measurements of the home are going to be very critical because people are going to want to know you know how big is the home you know how many square foot how big is the lot and things of that nature and then the conditions the covenants conditions and restrictions those are important as well okay so things like the HOA disclosure and things like that those are important because it tells you what you can and cannot do when it comes to that property when I was purchasing my first home yes I am a, I'm a real estate agent now in multiple states but I have also purchased a home of my own and converted it into a rental and when I was looking I was gonna purchase a home that was in the historical district of Sumter, South Carolina, right? And I had no idea, like, anything about that. And my mother drove all the way down to, uh, to, yeah, to South Carolina from Virginia to look at the property for me. And it was completely, like, not even anything like the picture said. I was deployed at the time, so you guys know I'm prior military. Well, I'm, I'm actually still military, but we're not gonna get into that. Um, Basically, my mother, she drove all the way to see it and it wasn't anything like we thought it was going to be. I think the allure of it just being a big house and having so many rooms in it was kind of like what drew me to it. And that really wasn't going to be the best investment for me. Because if you think about it, when you have a home that's in a historical district, it comes with multiple restrictions and covenants. And the HOA was not going to go for, you know, any color changes like most of the time it will pertain to the, the outside structure of the home. So when you have an HOA, they literally can control everything that you do when it comes to how the home looks on the outside, pretty much. If you decide that you wanna put a garage or a fence or something like that on your on your, your property and it's against the HOA or the, the covenants and restrictions, you're probably not gonna be able to do it or you're gonna get a fine because you did do it with you know, basically breaking their rules. So I got a fine once. I did end up buying an investment property, but I still I got a I got a fine because my grass was too high. So it's important to know those um, <laughs> those conditions, uh, covenants, and restrictions, as well as the HOA disclosure, and have those forms ready. So those are the forms that you're going to need when it's time for you to sell your home. That is going to be the majority of what you need. Um, that to get you started when it's time to go and sell. So don't worry about any of those things because when you hire me as your real estate agent in North Carolina, Charlotte, North Carolina, I will take care of you and I'll make sure that we have all those things together. Um, if you don't know how to do something, then I will help you along the way, of course. But thank you guys for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. Make sure you guys go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe to your girl's channel. If you guys have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask me. I will leave my contact information down below. So like I said, go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.